Welcome to lecture two of unit nine on the atmosphere. This lecture is talking all about atmospheric pressure, which is looking at the pressure exerted by all these little molecules of air, uh, whether it is nitrogen and oxygen atoms, or carbon dioxide molecules, or even some of those trace elements and particulates that we talked about in the last unit. And taking a look at how they influence things down here at the surface. One of the things you can notice from this picture is there seem to be a lot more of these little molecules down at the bottom than there are up at the top. And we'll talk about why that is and what kind of role that plays. But we're going to start off by just defining atmospheric pressure. And pressure in general is a force per unit area. So you guys are used to pressure when you talk about tire pressure or as we've seen in, in the news lately, a, the pressure of a football or even a basketball. And when we talk about atmospheric pressure, it's that force per unit area exerted on a surface by the weight of the atmosphere. Now normally we don't think of the atmosphere as having any weight because it's all this it's all gas, it's air, which to us seems weightless. But it actually does have a weight because it is part of matter, and matter is anything that has mass takes up space. And so it has a mass, and if a mass is acted on by gravity, it has a weight. So atmospheric pressure is influenced by gravity. Gravity takes the gases of the atmosphere and holds them near Earth's surface. That's why, if you remember in that picture at the beginning, there were more of those little blue dots at the bottom, closer to the Earth's surface, than there were at the top. It's closer to the center of the Earth, the more gravity there is. And so, because of this gravity, there are more air molecules compressed together at the surface of the Earth than farther up. And the other thing about atmospheric pressure it is exerted equally in all directions. All right, so that means if we have the surface here and a little Ralph Ralferson sitting on it there, he is feeling atmospheric pressure from every angle, and it, it equals out. And the reason we don't really notice it too much is because it's an equilibrium. It's equal on all of us. We've grown up with it. All right. If the air pressure changes quickly, you might get a headache, and it's because it takes this, the, the little holes in your head called sinuses a little while to catch up. And that's one of the places where we might see a difference. So because of Earth's gravity, 99% of the total mass of the atmosphere is within 32 kilometers of Earth's surface. Alright? It's a lot. Alright? Most of the mass of the atmosphere, which means most of the molecules in the atmosphere, are close to the surface of the Earth. Alright? So, at higher altitudes, the molecules are farther apart, and so there is less pressure. Alright? So the big thing no matter what part of the atmosphere you are in, what layer of the atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure always decreases as altitude increases every single time. You hear every time you hear, watch a football game in Denver at Mile High Stadium, you hear about the thin air. Well, they call it the thin air because there is le there are less air molecules up there. The air is not as dense, the molecules are farther apart, and so the air really is thinner. There's not as much gravity at Mile High Stadium as there is at sea level. Pressure always decreases as altitude increases. Altitude, however, is not the only thing that can influence pressure, and you guys know this. If you've ever inflated a basketball near the end of summer and left it in your garage for winter time, when it gets to the middle of winter, that ball probably has gone a little flat, or your bike tires from summer to winter, and that's because temperature also affects pressure. And in general, 
There was a scientist by the name of Boyle who came up with this. This is known as Boyle's Law. We'll talk about that more in chemistry. But as temperature increases, pressure tends to decrease. So as temperature gets higher, the pressure goes down, and that's because the molecules are moving faster, move far away from each other. Similarly, another way, another thing that influences air pressure, all right, air that contains a lot of water is less dense. All right, and that's because water is H2O. All right, if we look at the atomic masses using periodic table, hydrogen equals one AMU, another hydrogen equals another atomic mass unit, and oxygen equals 16. So water has a mass of 18 atomic mass units, just adding up their masses. All right. O2 is two oxygens, which is 2 times 16. 32 atomic mass units. Nitrogen, if you look, is has a mass of 14 atomic mass units. So 28. So water, a molecule of water vapor, is significantly lighter. It has less mass than either oxygen or nitrogen, which makes up most of the atmosphere. So if there's a lot of water vapor in the air, the air becomes less dense because the water has less mass than atmospheric oxygen or nitrogen. Well, how do we know all this? How have we tested all it? Well, that's because we've measured atmospheric pressure. And there's pretty much three or four units of atmospheric pressure. There's, there's really more. Um, the three main ones are the atmosphere which is abbreviated in ATM. All right, one atmosphere is one ATM. All right, it's, it's equal to the average sea level atmosphere at zero degrees Celsius on the Earth. There are millimeters of mercury given here by MMHG. That's what a lot of the world uses. Sometimes get called other things like TOR. Um, that's another name for millimeters of mercury. Here in the U.S., we use inches of mercury, which is I-N for inches, and then H-G, the chemical symbol for mercury. And the third one is millibars. Sometimes you'll also hear something called a kilopascal. Again, it's just another unit that, that they might use in different spots, um... We will use mostly atmospheres and inches or millimeters of mercury. Sometimes we use millibars. Depends on the weather maps we look at in future units. But standard atmospheric pressure, the pressure um, found at sea level at zero degrees Celsius, is set equal to one atmosphere, which also happens to be 760 millimeters of mercury, or 29.92 inches of mercury, or a thousand millibars. And to measure these, and we'll talk about specifically how millimeters of mercury and inches of mercury get measured, we use a device called a barometer. All right, and the average atmospheric pressure at sea level is one atmosphere, and that's where that number came from. And when we look at the, at the atmospheric pressure of other planets, we oftentimes relate it back to Earth. The atmospheric pressure on the surface at sea level of Earth is one atmosphere, so we, we figure the atmospheric pressure of different planets and celestial bodies based upon those numbers. So the first type of barometer... The mercurial barometer. Mercurial. Looks and sounds. Like mercury. And that's because it contains mercury in it. And what happens is we have pressure, atmospheric pressure, 
pressing on liquid mercury in the barometer, and there's two tubes in the barometer, and I think we'll see a picture of this soon. You have a picture in your notes. And it pushes on one, on, on the big tub of mercury, and pushes that mercury through the barometer, and the height difference of the mercury inside the tube changes with pressure. The higher the pressure, the higher the mercury rises. The amount the mercury rises is measured in either millimeters or inches, and that's how we get millimeters of mercury or inches of mercury. There we go. There's the picture I was talking about. So, there's something called a closed tube, open tube barometer. Well, here is one for mercury. We got this, like, beaker full of mercury in here by the, the gray silver. All right. Air pushes down on the mercury. Remember, it's pushing in all directions. Well, in this case, we have this beaker, so the only way the air is pushing is coming down. Pushes on the mercury and forces it up the tube. And if you find the starting level, depending on how high up the tube it goes, we can find the atmospheric pressure. Now, the reason we use mercury, mercury is a lot more dense and a lot heavier than something like water. And if we used water instead, if in the air pushed down water, that water at the same pressure would get pushed up almost 30 feet instead of 30 inches, which is quite a big difference. Yes, you could use water, but you need 30 feet, which is a three-story building for standard atmospheric pressure. And then this would be able to fluctuate a lot if the atmospheric pressure changes. Whereas when mercury was used, and mercury doesn't really react readily with air, so that's why it was a very easy thing to use, it fit in something that might have only been 40 inches tall, which is a little over 3 feet or a meter tall, you know, one meter stick, it's how tall it is. It can easily be used in a room, whereas a water barometer, you would need to have in a room that had a ceiling that was like 30 or 40 feet tall. So these became a lot more useful. The other type of barometer that we have used is something called an aneroid barometer. And in an aneroid barometer, we get a metal container that we have most of the air have been removed before we seal the container. It creates what is called a partial vacuum. What then happens is slight change in atmospheric pressure causes the sides of the container to bend or to bulge. All right, The higher the pressure, the more it bends inward. The, the lower the pressure, the more it bulges outward. And we attach a pointer to this, this this metal container and it causes the pointer to move whether it bends in or out. We put a scale on there. We would use a mercury barometer to kind of set that scale so we know exactly where to place the scale. And then what we can find out by looking at this as as this pointer moves one way or the other, we can measure the different pressures. The other interesting thing about this, since we know pressure goes down as you go higher in the altitude, all right, as long as the temperature stays relatively the same, what we can find out is that we can use a barometer to measure altitude as well, to give us an idea of altitude. The other thing we can use it for, if you notice right here, is a little rain cloud down there at around like 29.3, and a little sunshine up here around 30.8, we can use atmospheric pressure to take a good guess on the weather. And what we see is that rainy, cloudy weather tends to have low pressures, lower than standard pressure. Standard pressure is right where this needle is here. And clear, sunny weather has high pressures. And 
we use that to help predict the weather and look at the weather. And we'll talk about that when we get into the weather unit. Believe it or not, that is it for lecture two. It was a quick little lecture on atmospheric pressure. If you have any questions, please bring them on into class. And have a good night.